Hello everybody, it's Jacob here. Have you ever seen one of these? This is a palm cross. It's called a palm cross because it's made out of a, a palm leaf. And now I've got a, a palm leaf here. You can see this. It's a nice palm leaf. I, uh, I got it off of a tree. Here it is. And what I'm doing is I am splitting it right down the middle. And what I'm going to do is use half of this to show you how to make one of these palm crosses. And that's because on Sunday, it's going to be Palm Sunday. I've got a story about that in a minute. But let's have a look at how we make one of these crosses. Once you've split a palm leaf in half and left it to dry, it looks like this. Now, if we, are, if we fold this in half, like so, and then fold this piece up and over like this, then we can fold this one behind and push it through here and that locks it in place just like that. Now we have a nice little square in the middle. The next thing we do is we take this side, this end, and we push it through here. And this gives us one part of the, the cross, the cross bit that goes across. And then uh, we fold that down a little bit. And then we turn it over and we tuck this piece in at the back, like so. And that gives us the other cross piece. Just a little bit more to go to finish off the cross. We turn it over, we take this long piece and we fold it up and push it through the back here, like this, and fold that down. And lastly, we just tuck this back inside here, like this. And there we have one finished palm cross. Okay, so we've made our palm crosses for Palm Sunday. But what is the story of Palm Sunday? Well, you can find it in Matthew chapter 21, and I'm gonna turn there now in my Bible. Here we are. The story starts with Jesus coming down from the north of Israel to visit the city of Jerusalem. He's been there before, but this time things are a bit different. People are getting very excited because they think this time Jesus is going to do something special. It says, as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to a place called Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything, tell him the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. They're about to go into Jerusalem, but before Jesus gets there, he asks two of his disciples to go and get him a donkey to ride on. Now between you and me, a donkey doesn't sound like a very exciting form of transport, does it? If the President of the United States was coming to our country, he would fly over here in an aeroplane called Air Force One. It would land at one of the London airports and big crowds of people would gather to see him and security men would be there to welcome him off the plane and keep him safe. It's a very special plane and it's used only by the President of America. If the Queen was doing a very special trip through London on a celebratory day, she would arrive not in a plane, but in a special golden carriage. She has it for special occasions, and it's bright, and it shines, and it makes her look incredibly important. And she rides in that carriage wearing her crown. Air Force One, a golden carriage. 
And all Jesus has is a donkey. Doesn't seem like much in comparison, does it? But Matthew tells us why Jesus rode a donkey. Listen to this. He writes, This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. And then he writes down a little bit of what one of the prophets called Zechariah wrote a long time ago. He wrote, Tell the city of Zion, that's Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt the foal of a donkey. Ah, if you see somebody riding into Jerusalem on a donkey with all the crowds following and cheering, who might that person be? The answer is the king. So a donkey might not look like the most impressive form of transport, but it's the exact type of transport that Israel's new king would choose when he comes. And what did Jesus do? He sent two of his disciples into a little village to go and get him a donkey. He is about to ride into Jerusalem as the king. So the donkey tells us Jesus is the king. But there's another reason why it was a donkey. Why didn't he ride a war horse? Why didn't he drive in a chariot? Why did it need to be a donkey? Well, I think to show that Jesus is humble. You see, Jesus didn't come to boss everyone about. Jesus didn't come to gather a large army and fight against all his enemies. The very surprising thing about Jesus is that he came into Jerusalem to be king, but he also came into Jerusalem to die on a cross, which is the most embarrassing and horrible form of death ever invented. See, Jesus is a very different type of king. He's the kind of king who, who lives to serve and save his people. And so how did the crowds react when they saw Jesus climbing onto a donkey to ride into Jerusalem? Well, it says a large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. And the crowds were shouting and cheering and they were laying down branches from trees, palm branches, in front of Jesus. And that's why today we use palm branches, palm leaves, to make these crosses, to remind us that Jesus is the king who rode into Jerusalem on the donkey to show that he was a humble king who was going to die for us on the cross. Jesus is the king who came to save his people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus came to be the king of Jerusalem, not to lord it over everybody, but to die on a cross to save his people. And so we praise his name. We shout praise to you, God in heaven, for our saviour king, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to hand over to your teacher now. Thanks for listening and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.